Hello, my name is Captain Chris Rigby. I've been an air pilot since I left school back in the 1970s, and I've worked for many of the larger airlines in the United Kingdom since, including British Airways, Britannia becoming Thompson's and TUI, EasyJet, and even Ryanair. Since retiring, I've been running a simulator company at Coventry Airport where we train professional pilots. I've also been doing a lot of cruise lecturing and have worked for most of the major companies in the intervening years. I'm going to have a look now at some of the slides I use in my presentations, and I hope they'll be of interest to you. I often start my lecture series with how on earth does it fly? And looking at this aircraft, the Airbus A380, the largest aircraft ever built, you might ask that very question. How on earth does it fly? And where did it all start from? Well, these two gentlemen, Orville and Wilbur Wright, built the first powered flight aircraft uh, and they demonstrated this on the sands at Kitty Hawk uh, in the 1903. They were also the first true aircraft engineers. And the reason I say that is this machine, the wind tunnel which they built to test the aerofoil shapes and the drag, and therefore the power that was required to drive that aircraft along. And so it was in 1903, they got airborne, and this photograph was taken of one of their first flights. How amazing, 1903, just over 100 years ago, from there, to hear. Incredible. What a wonderful story. Now, for most people, the weather is just whether you need to take an umbrella or a raincoat. But for pilots, of course, the weather is the very environment in which they live. And they have to be aware of all the threats coming in their way. Some of the extremes that we're all familiar with are things like thunderstorms. And here's the lightning coming down from one of those storms. How does it form? How does it work? Why do you get lightning? Why do you get thunderclaps? Well, I look at that and many other weather extremes in diagrams such as this, which shows the whole makeup of a thunderstorm cloud. And if you fly for one of these clouds, what happens to the airplane? Well, very largely, lightning does not hurt an aircraft, but hailstorms certainly are a danger. And here's an EasyJet 737 damaged by hail coming out of some such storm. And of course, aviation is not just about airplanes. Balloons were a very big thing in the 1700s and 1800s. And here's the Montgolfier brothers demonstrating their hot air balloon in front of the King of France to prove that it could be done. And from there, of course, the hydrogen men came along and eventually the British built the R101, which crashed unfortunately in the 30s on its maiden flight to Karachi, killing most of the people on board. Where will that go in the future? Well, who knows? But Lockheed Martin thinks there's a possibility they might have a space balloon, maybe. We have a look at all these sort of things. And where did aviation start from in Britain? Well, here's the foundation of one of the very biggest airlines, Britannia Thompson's. They started as Eurava back in the 60s, formed by a gentleman called Ted Langton, with these Constellation aircraft, which they bought from El Al. And of course, those days, things were very different. Here's the arrival at uh, Customs Hall in Luton Airport. Not very recognisable today, but some of us may remember this sort of setup all the same. Britannia have gone on, of course, to be one of the largest charter airlines in the world. And here they are with, under their Thompson flag and the TUI logo on the label. Hijacking. Well, oh, an interesting subject. And this famous photograph of Dawson's Field with the BOAC VC-10 being blown up when they were trying to flee, uh, free Leila Khaled from uh, custody within the United Kingdom. She'd been caught on another aircraft trying to hijack it. We look at the origins of hijacking, the reasons, why do people do it, political, money, uh, all sorts of reasons. And of course, this has led to increased security for all of us at airports all around the world. It was this gentleman, D.B. Cooper. We think is his name, we're not sure. In fact, it probably is not his name. But this gentleman hijacked an aircraft, took a lot of money, jumped out the back and was never found. We look into the mystery of what happened to D.B. Cooper. And what happened to this aircraft, the Malaysian 370, the one that disappeared on the flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing? Many theories, hijacking, aliens, all sorts of stuff. One of the theories that we in the industry know, uh, think of is possibility of a fire. The result, however, whatever it was, was devastation for this aircraft and its passengers. And here's part of that aircraft, the what's called the flapper on, on the back wing, uh, found on the island of Reunion on the Western Indian Ocean. So what does a 777 look like inside? Well, here's the flight deck in normal times, beautiful airplane, lovely environment. But what happens if you have, say, a fire on board? 
Well, here's what happened to an Egypt air aircraft on the ground in Cairo after a fire. Could this have happened on the Malaysian 370? Highly likely. Come and see what I think at my lecture on what happened to the Malaysian 370. And of course, no aviation series would be complete without supersonic flight. Here's an American fighter just going through the sound barrier, and you can see the low pressure behind the shockwave forming there. And of course, I follow this on to British development, to the Concorde, uh, its success as an aircraft, not commercial, unfortunately, but nevertheless, the most magnificent icon of aviation that Britain has ever produced and probably will ever produce. What a great shame that it had its demise, both in the crash in Paris uh, and then following on from that, the Twin Towers in New York, which was its final death knell. In the future, who knows? Here's Richard Branson's version of what may happen to supersonic flight, and it's highly likely this aircraft will be flying within the next few years. So there's a brief summary of some of the lectures I offer on the cruising that I do. Uh, my wife and I love traveling long distance. We like the long haul destinations. So if you have anything coming up which you think your passengers would be interested in, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Please do contact PL Entertainment and I look forward to meeting you sometime in the future. Many thanks.